We have four displacement vectors, and what we're going to do to help keep the data organized is put the information into a chart. We have symbolized the four given vectors with letters A through D, and then we're going to have their X and Y components in the vertical columns of our chart. The first vector has X and Y components of 30 and 40 respectively, so we simply plug those into our chart as follows. The second vector has unknown X component, B sub X, and then a known Y component of negative 70. For the third vector, we have negative 20 and C sub Y for the components, and then the fourth vector is negative 80 and negative 70. Next, we look at the resultant vector. It says the overall displacement has the following components of negative 140 and negative 20. We call that the resultant, and we can fill those values into the chart as well. Now the nice thing about the chart is that it helps keep the data organized. We can take the x components, we can sum them and set them equal to the total x component. And then similarly we take the y components and sum them and set them equal to the total y component. Let's go ahead and set up those two equations right now. There we have it, and now we can easily solve for b sub x using the first equation. We're just going to combine some like terms. So we'll add these terms together here. We get negative 70 plus b sub x is equal to negative 140. And then to solve for bx, just add 70 to both sides. We'll kind of come over here and we can see that b sub x is equal to negative 70 centimeters. So this is the correct answer to part A. Similarly, we can use the second equation to solve for cy. We combine 40 minus 70 minus 70, we get negative 100 plus cy is equal to negative 20 and then just add 100 to both sides. And you can see that C sub Y is equal to positive 80 centimeters. That's the correct answer to part B. We can move on and solve for parts C and D by considering the X and Y components of the total displacement. So going back and looking at the chart, we see that the X component was negative 140, and the Y component was negative 20. We're gonna draw those to solve parts C and D. So here is that drawing of the X and Y components. X is negative 140, Y is negative 20. So notice the X component points to the left along the negative X axis, and then the Y component points downward along the negative Y axis. The resultant vector is that vector that we have marked R. It is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We can say that the hypotenuse squared, so R squared, is equal to the negative 140 squared plus the negative 20 squared. If you simplify the right side, you should get 20,000, and then take the square root of both sides, and you will see that the magnitude of the resultant vector is about 141 centimeters. That's the correct answer to part C. In part D, we need the angle measured from the positive x-axis. So of course, the positive x-axis is this axis right here. We need the angle measured from that axis all the way to the resultant vector, so right there. We're going to call that theta, but to find theta, we actually need to find this angle right here, which we can call theta prime. So looking at that right triangle, we can see that the tangent of theta prime would equal the side that is opposite of theta prime, which is negative 20, divided by the side that is adjacent to theta prime, which is negative 140. Now those negatives would cancel, so you actually could say tangent of theta prime is equal to 20 over 140. And then to solve for theta prime, you would have to do the inverse tangent. So we're going to take the inverse tangent of 20 over 140. Let's pick up our calculators and find that. And that turns out to be approximately 8.1 degrees. Now that's not our final answer. Look back at the diagram and you will see that we found that theta prime. That's this right here, it's about eight degrees. But to get the angle marked theta, we're going to have to be a little bit careful. Notice, starting at the positive x-axis, you would have to measure out 180 degrees to get there, and then you'd have to go that extra eight degrees right there to get to your resultant vector. So in other words, theta is going to equal 180 degrees plus the 8.1 degrees that we calculated a moment ago. So this means that theta is 188.1 degrees. So this would be the correct answer to part D. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.